So today we are going to talk about pterysis versicola or tinea versicola. A superficial fungal infection which is usually very common in tropical countries. So when we talk about the etiology of pterysis versicola or the tinea versicola, the causative fungi are the Malassezia furfur and Malassezia globosa. Those are the two common fungi, Malassezia furfur, Malassezia globosa. These are lipophilic dimorphic fungi they are like they, they favor lipid environment like dimorphic fungi that means they can grow as yeast and they can grow as hyphae right these are normal skin commensals right they are commonly found in adolescents and adults these are normal normally found on the skin as yeast right so under under commensal as commensals they exist as yeast Right. So what happens? What happens during the disease process? Right. So when the uh, in the pathogen of pterysis versicola, what happens is these yeast cells are converted to hyphae. That phase change occurs. That is the one that results in the disease. Right. So pterysis versicola or tinea versicola is associated with phase change from the yeast phase to the hyphal phase. Right. The stimulus for this phase change is not very clear. Right. The other thing that we need to understand is this affects only the very superficial layer of the skin, that is the stratum corneum. So it doesn't go deep to stratum corneum, only at the level of the stratum corneum. So when you talk about the epidemiology of fungi, right? So I said this more common in tropical countries because sun exposure is a possible triggering factor for the phase conversion. So sun exposure is thought to be a triggering factor to convert the fungi from the east phase to the hyphal phase right there are some other associated uh, triggering factors too maybe the cushing disease is one of them cushing disease is thought to uh, be a triggering factor for the phase conversion then malnutrition corticosteroid therapy immunosuppression pregnancy and oral contraceptives they all can contribute to the phase conversion from the East phase to the hyphal phase, right? Then the disease is more common in adolescent and young adults because I said it's a lipophilic fungi. So adolescents and young, young adults they have uh, increased sebaceous gland, gland activity. So the sebaceous activity is high. So for that reason, uh, the disease is more common in adolescents and young adults because the fungus is a lipophilic fungus. So when we talk about the clinical presentation. Right. Normally, patients present with hypopigmented macules, some kind of partial depigmentation. Hypopigmented macules, macules are not the lesions that are not elevated from the surface. Right? Hypopigmented macules, there may be fine scales. If you scratch, you can see, you know, light scales. Right? And this hypopigmented effect is thought to be due to acylic acid produced by fungi. Acylic acid is a mild bleaching agent. So that that is thought to uh, be responsible for the depigmentation, mild depigmentation of uh, skin, right? So that is why the reason for hypopigmented macules. But at the same time, some people, like especially th those with very fair skin, they can have hyperpigmented uh, macules, right? So the fair skin people may have hyperpigmented macules, but commonly what you see are the hypopigmented macules that's what you can see in this picture you see the hypopigmented macules right these are very these lesions are very common on the on the chest back of the trunk upper arms upper arms and also these lesions are very rare on the face very very rare on the face right and uh, so it's usually they are not true rated. there is no itching of the lesions so that is how the clinical presentation the only presentation is it's a cosmetic problem right because patient doesn't have any other symptoms usually that hypopigmented macules that is the major complaint so when you talk about the diagnosis there are two methods to diagnose pterysis versicola right one thing is you can use the uv light illumination in the in the dermatology clinic you have the wood slab, wood, wood slab the eliminate the ultraviolet light. With ultraviolet light exposure, you can see the lesions, fluorescence lesions. Usually the color is yellow or orange fluorescence. Yellow to orange fluorescence lesions can be seen 
when the lesions are exposed to ultraviolet light. So the wood slab can be used to diagnose. Oh, the other, the, the most confirmative diagnosis is by actually laboratory, laboratory confirmation. You take the skin scrapings, right? And put a drop of 10% uh, potassium hydroxide, then add a drop of cotton, uh, lactophino cotton blue and look under the microscope look under the microscope so then you can see the yeast cells and the hyphae so now here we take the skin scraping with the blunt scalpel you take the skin scrapings from this uh, the skin scrapings and put it on a glass slide put 10 percent koh because why why 10 percent koh koh K potassium hydroxide is a keratolytic agent it will dissolve keratin so when the dis keratin is dissolved you can see the the, the the yeast cells and the fungal filament will be free on the uh, solution so that is the so that's why we had 10 percent ko to dissolve the keratin to release fungal hyphae and the uh, yeast cells right then you had a drop of lactophene or cotton blue to give the color it's, it gives a blue coloration so under the light microscope you will see bunch of hyphae as in this picture bunch of angulated these hyphae are bent hyphae they are, we call them angulated or bent hyphae right these are the angulated hyphae and also you will see bunch of yeast cells right if you remember what happens during the disease process is phase conversion from the yeast cells to angulated hyphae so you will see large number of angulated hyphae right normally under uh, 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 normal circumstances when the when the uh, 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 when the uh, fungus exercise a yeast right that is the uh, no, no commensal situation then there are no lesions but when the patient has lesions they are really mixture of uh, yeast cells and angulated hyphae. So that appearance gives the spaghetti and meatball appearance. Meatballs are the yeast cells, spaghetti are the angulated hyphae. So that's the famous spaghetti and meatball appearance under the light microscope. So when you talk about the treatment of uh, pitriasis versicola, right? Usually people commonly use 2.5% selenium sulfide lotion, which is over-the-counter uh, uh, medication, 2.5% saline sulfide, and uh, you apply it to the whole body and then uh, till the lesions disappear. So you can apply three times a week. Right. And also the most popular are the topical A-shoals. Topical A-shoals, you can use 2% uh, ketoconazole shampoo, myconazole cream, or clotrimazole cream. Right. I mean, if the disease is severe, you might have to use systemic casuals, right? meaning you can take acials orally, that is itraconosol, fluconosol, or ketoconosol. Right? Then also, you might have to educate the patient because though you treat the patient, the lesions, lesions do not disappear very quickly. Right? The fungi will be destroyed, but the depigmental lesions will be there for some time. It may take, it takes some time, at least few weeks for the lesions to come to the normal skin color. Usually this normal coloration of the skin occurs with the gradual uh, exposure to sunlight. So you will have to explain the patient that the, 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 the resolution of lesion takes some time, right? Otherwise patient might come back to you saying the, uh, is still, uh, the, the disease or uh, the patient is not well yet, right? So you will have to explain the patient that it might take little time for the resolution of skin lesions, right? So th that is all about pitriasis versicolor. And uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. And also please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future lectures. Thank you so much.